Cool. So um, some of you may have done some code wars before, some of you may haven't. Um, and um, uh, it can be a really useful tool, uh, but there are some good things and there are some bad things about it. Um, and um, uh, it's been around for, for a while. I remember uh, uh, using it uh, a, a while ago. Um, and so uh, I don't have that many points. So I'm sorry if lots of people have thousands and thousands. Um, I don't use it that frequently. <laughs> um, I think I actually changed the, the points uh, system uh, a while ago as well to like make it more impressive. Um, and that being said, um, uh, some of the really good things about it is it gets you to like think about small things uh, and, and it has different uh, sort of levels to it. So we start off at uh, the simplest version. So up here on the left is like the rating of the example um, and the ratings or the kinds of examples that are, you'll pair on will be probably the, 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 the simple ones, which are eight and it goes from eight down to one. And so you'll start at eight and you'll just like increase. If anyone's familiar with uh, rankings in, in martial arts, it follows that style. Um, um, but otherwise we don't need to worry about that. Um, so uh, it's good because it helps us like just focus on small things at a time. Um, and not only that, um, but it has everything in like one place. So we just need a browser to be able to like do some programming, which is kind of fun. We don't need to worry about anything else. We can just do everything right here. Um, and it's separated into like three different areas that we need to like focus on. On the left here, like the instructions and output um, that I'll talk about. So here's where we get the information of what we need to do. Um, and this box here, you might imagine is where we actually write some stuff. We write some code, maybe write some other things in here. Um, and then down in this little box is, is actually a, a, a useful um, uh, a box, which is a place where we can uh, uh, just test what we're doing. And we can just make sure we're on the right track. Um, so I've um, um, I've chosen this random uh, 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 example. Um, I've been um, choosing, trying to choose like different ones every time I do these, um, um, just just for some fun. Um, so, um, uh, what else was I going to say? Can't remember. Anyway, so. Um, one of the one of the, the useful things about uh, Code Wars um, and the fact that it has this box down here called Sample Tests is um, it can give me some information about uh, uh, what's expected. Um, and so I'm, I'm, I'll get to reading the instructions in just a second. Um, um, but uh, this uh, this box down here it gives me a way to check like what am I doing? Um, um, and am I doing the right thing? Um, and so this uh, this box here, if I want to like check what I'm doing, what I do is click this box, this button here that says uh, run run the, the, the sample tests. Um, and so anytime I want to check my work, I just run this button um, and it should show me whether I pass or, 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 or fail my tests. So uh, this is where I'll read the information uh, to understand what's happening. And, and on the left here, uh, we can get some useful information about what's happening. Um, and what I read from this is that uh, uh, the test expected uh, uh, this value, but instead it got nil. So at some point I'm going to figure out A, what I need to do, and then B, well, why this happened. At the moment, you're probably all far ahead of me and, and know there's nothing in my solution, so there's nothing happening. So. And um, that's pretty much like the, uh, the Code Wars interface. Uh, there are a couple of things about the different languages that I can change to um, and, and uh, some more information about that. Um, so uh, some of the bad things about Code Wars is that sometimes people write solutions um, that uh, aren't readable. And it's, sometimes it's a bit of a game that people play uh, to try and get like the shortest number of characters or the, the most unreadable solution. And um, so uh, I wouldn't always look at uh, the way other people solve problems as like the way to program, um, but just use it as a way to like solve problems and just have practice solving problems. That's usually the most, the best benefit. Um, cool. So um, with that being said, let's read, let's read the instructions. <clears throat> so in this, in this example, and um, uh, what is it trying to, to get me to do? Uh, I'm going to read out the instructions and then I'm just going to write out some thoughts uh, in the solution box. 
Um, the instructions say in the following six digit number, uh, 91 is the greatest sequence of two consecutive digits. In the following 10 digit number, uh, 67890 is the greatest sequence of five consecutive digit numbers. So what it's asking me to do is saying complete the solution so that returns the greatest sequence of five consecutive digits found within the number. The number will be passed in as a string and it should only return a five digit integer. The number passed may be as large as a thousand digits. Wow. Cool. So um, I'm going to try and the first step that, that I go through is essentially just trying to clarify what the instructions are trying to tell me. Um, and the, 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 the tool that I use or the way that I go about this is just to try and uh, 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 write it down in English as a series of steps. Um, and I usually just like, we'll, we'll type it here or I'll write it down in a book um, or I'll just type it somewhere in my notes to sort of like try and think about, as you might do normally, like what are the steps in your head you would do to solve this? So basically just something like, you know, what is the first step? What is the second step? Just trying to run the test accidentally. Uh, uh, what is the um, third step, et cetera? And just try and think about uh, what, what I need to do. Um, so um, uh, that's, that's one of the, the, the tools that, that I'm going to ask you to always do is like before you begin, try and think about what are the steps that, that you need to do uh, to get there. Um, uh, it's one of the biggest uh, challenges that I see new beginners do, which is try and jump ahead too quickly. Um, and they try and like bite a big, big thing off rather than uh, try and break it down into small steps and just be clear about what those steps are. Uh, it, it may be counterintuitive, but um, uh, uh, you know, experienced uh, uh, programmers, uh, while they look like they're doing big steps, they're actually doing a series of very small steps. And so uh, the, 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 sort of more, the less experienced programmers, the more junior they are, they don't see those small steps and they try and just do big steps and they just get stuck. So one of the things to always think about is just like, what, what's a small step? What's the next small step I can do? Or how can I simplify this problem? So, for example, um, um, this, this, this sample test that's trying to get me to use, there's just lots of numbers here. So my first thing is, like, I'm not going to worry about the whole thing. I'm just going to try and choose, a, like, a little bit of it and just see what I, what, what's, what I can do with this. So I'm just going to take this number. I'm going to say, let's start off with a smaller number and just worry about, like, how do I get this thing to work? Um, uh, what do I need to do to this uh, uh, to find the biggest sequence of five numbers? Now, these are all in order. So uh, if you already jumped ahead of me, the biggest sequence of five numbers is just going to be like the end part of it, like this. So um, uh, keep, it su keep it simple um, and, 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 and try and like, uh, uh, visualize it. And let's, let's have a look at like, what that would mean. So um, um, I know at the end of this, I need to get to, to, to a number like that. I'm going to keep these all as comments uh, to begin with. So I'm going to say, like, I need to start with this. And I need to come out with this. There's going to be a series of steps that I need to do to get there. Um, so um, as you might imagine, I did something in my head where I looked at, like, what, like how this, that, how, what that meant or how that was going to work. Um, and, and so there could be an, a number of different ways that we could solve this problem. And uh, uh, a way steps to solve a problem is, is, is just essentially an algorithm. Algorithms are just defined sets of steps. Um, and so uh, one way to approach this might be just to uh, uh, try and find what all the five consecutive groups are. Um, so uh, uh, maybe, maybe that's the first step, find all, uh, uh, groups of five consecutive digits. So maybe that's my first step. So if I did it in this example, I would have something like this. One, two, three, four, five. And then two, three, four, five, six. Um, and then three, four, five, six, seven. Maybe something like that. And then once I have that set um, of, uh, of, of groups of numbers, uh, it then asks me to return the greatest one. So then my, my last step is uh, uh, find uh, 
uh, the maximum uh, number. I'm going to add an, another step here, which is just like then return that number. So uh, this is this is like my rudimentary pseudocode, and pseudocode is a phrase that we use for like uh, a code that's like um, not not real code, but like a series of steps. Um, and, um, and and this is this is where I'm going to try and begin to think about. Okay, now that I have like a clear enough picture in my head of like the steps I'm going to take, I'm going to see. Uh, how I can uh, turn this into code. Um, and my tools at my disposal could be my, my own knowledge. I'm gonna try and look things up as I go um, and, and, and see what I can do. Um, I'm also gonna just pause here for any thoughts or questions, because uh, I realize I don't actually have the Zoom chat open. So I need to try and find it. Although, where is it? I can't see it. Chat. There you are. I can see it now. Cool. So there are no questions at the moment. If you have a question, uh, uh, definitely uh, now's time. Just unmute yourself and we'll just throw it into the chat. Am I going too slowly? Am I going too, uh, too quickly? Uh, is my volume okay? Those kinds of things. Cool. Uh, uh, otherwise, like a quick thumbs up that everything's going fine. Just a quick bit of feedback. That's quite awesome. <laughs> uh, sometimes uh, uh, the lack of response uh, in, uh, um, um, is tough. I, I do like talking though, so I can just keep talking. That's also fine. Um, okay, so uh, I'm trying to keep things as simple as possible um, and give you some strategies to like think about as you do your own code war solutions. So so far we've covered like. Uh, how do we interpret instructions? Um, and the, the strategy that I'm using is just to try and write it down into steps um, and um, uh, think about what the input is that's coming into it. Give yourself like a small example, a simple example, and then what is the uh, output that uh, you, you would get. Um, and usually the tricky part is you know what it's gonna be, um, but it's just like, what are those steps? And sometimes it's, you don't know what it's gonna be, and so you have to spend some time thinking about it. Um, when you're here, let's let's now try and find a way to um, uh, uh, break this into code. So, this first step here: find all groups of five uh, five digits. Um, uh, that's something that I'm going to spend a little bit of time thinking about, um, because uh, it's it's nice and easy to say that, but actually, how 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 can we do this? Um, I just jump straight into this step, going to going to this because I could think about it, but. I wish I wish I, a computer had its own brain and could just do it, right? But we have to tell it tell it what to do. Um, computers are actually really stupid and, and, and don't have thoughts of themselves <laughs> yet. Um, so um, uh, the, the 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 question here is okay. So how can I break this part down? How do I find all groups of five consecutive digits? Um, so I, I've taken this example. Um, and let's try and find like a, like a pattern here. Um, um, uh, I, I know, for example, um, that this length uh, uh, of this, or the number, the, the number of numbers, uh, is is seven. Um, so let's just try and like uh, figure out what's going on here. So this is like example one. Let's, let's say. Um, um, where uh, the length is uh, a four, and, and I'm going to have um, these three examples. Um, sorry, length is seven, um, and I have uh, a group of three. Let's have another. Let's let's try, for example, maybe an even smaller example. Um, and um, this is the number. And this length is, as you might suspect, length, it's got six numbers into it. Um, and how many groups of five can we get? We can get one and two. So this is a group of two. So it looks like I can find out how many groups there are just by uh, looking at the length of how many numbers there are. Um, so if, if, I, if I have this information, uh, and maybe I can, I can, I can find out uh, the set of them, um, 
And it looks like if I, if I just go in order and say, let's do this first set and let's do the second set, it's just going to be displacing uh, uh, by one number each time. So um, my, my idea at the moment is if I can just keep writing out this pattern, uh, maybe I can, I can understand uh, how I use like, the length of the number to find out how many, how many groups there are. Um, so uh, in this example, um, um, let's, uh, let's experiment. So I'm going to show you, uh, I'm going to show you uh, tool number two to use, which is uh, a, a way to experiment, uh, a way to sort of like understand and get some feedback from the, 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 the program that you're trying to write. Um, and if you're on, if you're on a Mac, um, uh, it comes standard with it. Uh, if you're on Windows, uh, there's a browser version of this. Uh, if you, so if you're on a Mac, uh, you can just open up your terminal. Uh, if you're on a Mac, that means uh, if you press command spacebar, uh, you'll bring up your short, uh, uh, your searchlight to, to find your terminal and you just type in terminal um, and you'll be able to find it. And so I'm going sh to share a different screen and I'll show you what I'm doing. So you should all be looking at a nice big yellow box. And um, uh, the three letters that I type here, uh, 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 um, and this comes from, uh, just, to, just to recap, if you just, on your Mac, you can go to command spacebar and type in terminal. Uh, the command spacebar brings up your, sh your, your sort of like shortcut search, and you can just open up your terminal. Um, this is a way to, uh, to uh, play around with. And I'm going to type in these three letters, which you can also do. Um, um, and it brings me into a Ruby environment. So I can start to play around with some Ruby here, um, uh, just to sort of like experiment and, and, and understand uh, when I do things, what happens. If you're on a, if you're on a Windows, you, there is a way to get this, but the easier version is just go to your browser and go to uh, um, uh, 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 it, and I'm going to uh, give you a link to this in your Zoom chat. Hold on one second. Uh, the lovely chat window just keeps disappearing. So there you are. So, uh, Throw that into your browser and you should be able to very quickly start up a, a, a Ruby uh, uh, a version of this. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use my terminal uh, for the moment so you can see what I'm doing. Um, um, and then if you want some help setting that up, uh, uh, it should be fairly self-explanatory. Self um, one of the reasons why this uh, it can be really helpful is because it can give you some feedback. And one of the things about uh, getting better at programming is by essentially getting more visibility on understanding what your code is doing. Um, and so where possible, always try and like, make a hypothesis and test it out. And this hypothesis driven way of thinking, um, um, oh, th so thanks Kay. <laughs> uh, that's, that's entirely correct. Um, uh, too hasty on my, on my key press. Um, and is, is, is built to get feedback from, from, from uh, your code. So, um, so for example, I wanted to um, uh, practice or, or like try and focus on, on, on the problem that I'm solving. I want to understand like, what happens if I do the certain thing. Uh, uh, we can test it out in this environment. Um, and so um, let's, let's, have an ex let's have an example. Um, and I'm going to uh, um, uh, store in this local variable called digits, um, the scenario that we're working with and say it's like one, two, three, four, five, six. And I'm trying to understand how do I get, how do I make this into two sets of five con con consecutive digits? Um, and so far I've spotted a pattern between the length of the, the, the word, which is uh, the length of the, the, the string, which has got six. And we can see that because Ruby has a lovely method called length. Um, so we can just uh, 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 call a method uh, on, on this uh, string, and we can just have, uh, 
get it to return. And so what I want you to, to think about is as you experiment is just try and get feedback from uh, the, 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 the sort of code that you're writing as often as you can, just to sort of see what's happening. And the more you can do that, the, the more you'll start to, to, to think about return values and, and what things, how things are evaluated. Um, so, um, uh, so far I'm, I'm at a place where I'm like, okay, uh, I have a place I can experiment. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think about how do I, uh, I uh, group this into two consecutive, uh, 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 into two groups of consecutive numbers that are five. Um, and um, I know it's going to be two. So my pattern before was that uh, it's essentially um, uh, a length of six means there's going to be two groups. So um, um, I want to find a, a, a set of five consecutive numbers. Um, and um, uh, one way we can do this um, is by trying to access uh, 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 parts of a string. And um, if I just return what's in, inside this variable, I can just press enter straight away um, and I get to see what's inside this variable. Um, so whenever you're worried about what's going on in your code, just like get, get your uh, 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 program um, to, to tell you what's going on by returning it um, in, a, in your Ruby environment. So um, I want to be able to return a, a character. So uh, in Ruby, we do this by using the brackets notation. Um, and we can put in here um, a number. And um, uh, for those of you who've either uh, uh, had some, some thoughts about this, but uh, if I wanted to return, say for example, uh, the, the number three, uh, uh, what number would I, would I put inside these square brackets? And if you, if you tell me but just by writing in the Zoom group chat, how old would it be? If I wanted to return, uh, essentially access the number three, um, and I get a lot of people throwing me the number two, yes. Um, and so uh, and how do we describe what number two is? Um, so if I had to say, um, what kind of thing do I put inside the square brackets? What two is an example of what? Does anyone have a thought about it? So Simon, you, you give me the word index. So Joanne, you're like, index, question mark? Uh, yes, uh, you're, all, you're all correct. Um, so we access uh, um, uh, uh, different uh, elements uh, of, of a string uh, or different characters by the index. So uh, we always start from the left at zero um, and we can get the first character. So uh, the next step up is, well, how do we get consecutive characters? Uh, can we, how, how, how do we do this? Um, uh, does anyone have an idea? How can we use the same notation to get a multiple consecutive digits? Uh, Mary has an idea with a range. That's, that's an interesting one. Uh, can use a comma. Uh, both are actually quite, quite correct in different ways. Um, <clears throat> so let's, let's experiment with the first one. Um, uh, and both uh, Farza and, and, and Lara, um, uh, rather than just say dot, 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 like an ellipsis, <laughs> which is what I originally thought that was, like, I'm not sure. It's actually the range, right? Um, yeah. Um, yeah, cool. So let's uh, let's, have, let's try and get um, uh, 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 let's say three consecutive numbers. Let's use the range first. Um, oh, that's not how you do it. Um, and let's say uh, the first three consecutive numbers is zero, and then we go index to index. Um, so that will be uh, uh, zero to uh, two. Um, cool. So uh, we, we, have a, we have a nice way to get um, a, a, a series of consecutive numbers. Now, someone said a comma, uh, Simon. Simon, you're also correct. So let's have a look at what we do there. If we did the same thing. Um, it's actually different. It's not indexed as the second argument. Uh, the, the, first, the first is, but the second is just the numbers uh, uh, from that, or the, 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 the number of characters from that index. Um, so you know, just be careful uh, when you do it, it's not, it's not index uh, on both arguments, it's just uh, uh, the first one. So if I wanted to say start from um, the third character and get me two, two characters, uh, we get four and five, uh, for example. Um, <clears throat> now, uh, some of the more enterprise ones of you are maybe wondering about negative numbers, what we do, or really big numbers and whatnot, and I invite you all to play around and just see what happens when you, when you do these, when you put these things in. Um, and the best way to learn is just by playing around and trying to go off and offshoots uh, to see, see, see what happens. Experimentation is like a really good way to learn. Um, so if we go back to the original problem, try to find uh, five uh, consecutive numbers, and let's use um, 
the range um, zero to four to get five consecutive numbers. Cool. So that gives us uh, an idea, but we need we need the, we need the second second part of this, which is the other group of five is not one through five; it's two through six. So um, <clears throat> we need to to get two through six. So what would the 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 the, the start and end of the range be? Neri says one through five. Anyone want to challenge? <clears throat> Interesting. One through five. Cool. So uh, uh, that's that's lovely to see. Um, let's try some of these examples out. Let's do zero. Uh, let's want to do one through five. Cool. That looks like it's the second one. Once we do one through six. Mm, interesting. Why don't we do one through? So as you, as you can see, there are there are uh, ways that this 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 might involve uh, uh, different answers. But at the moment, we're okay. We're fine. Um, and um, and we're going to we're going to with one through five at the moment. Um, so um, this is uh, uh, this looks like we have uh, some useful information. So we know that uh, in a group of uh, uh, numbers from one through six, um, uh, so that's a length of six, and we have two possible ranges: one through five, and then one through uh, zero through four, and one through five. So we have to essentially now form the, the rule that says, with a length of six, how do we get this information? Um, so um, uh, let's let's bring this back into uh, uh, the Code Wars environment uh, uh, with this information that we have now. So I'm just going to now reshare my Code Wars if I can find it. There we are. I think. Can you share? Brave Bowser. Let's do that. And share. Cool. There we are. So many tabs. Okay. Um, okay, so uh, we've done a little bit of experimentation. We've understood that um, in this example here, uh, we managed to get two groups, and we do this by going through a range. Um, uh, the first uh, first one. I'm just going to keep writing here uh, if I can if I can make sense of it. Uh, um, the first example was uh, using the range zero through four, uh, and then the second one was ranged one through five. So we have some information here, and. Um, I'm going to now try and think about what what the rule could be. So what I'm thinking at the moment is um, that we could take the uh, um, the length. It looks like there is just like a simple rule of minusing four from it to find the numbers of groups, um, and then uh, uh, that number of times just go from zero. Uh, and do uh, starting from uh, a zero, then incremented by one, we can just find the next group of five numbers. So if I just try and write that down, what, what I was thinking is uh, um, find, I'm gonna do it over here. So I want to do this part, and this is the, the part I've been working on, which is um, um, uh, get the length, get the numbers, number of, of groups from um, uh, the length of the digits subtract four. That will give me the, the number of groups that I need. Um, and then there might be other ways to do this by the way so I'm just I'm just I'm just rolling with it. <laughs> um, then um, um, uh, I'm going to um, uh, 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 that many times uh, 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 find 
using the range. of five consecutive numbers. Oh, oh. And, and each time I start uh, the range, and that doesn't say it's not even, each time I start the range, I, I start uh, with, I start further by one. So for example, I want to, as I did with my example, I said started from zero to five, uh, zero to four, sorry. And then I did uh, zero, uh, nope, one, two, five, if that's how it works. Okay, so does that make sense? Uh, uh, let me ask that in a different way. Uh, uh, thumbs up if you're, if you're following the, the logic here, thumbs down if you're like lost, middle is like, I kind of get it and I just want to uh, go through it again. Uh, give, me, just give me some thumbs uh, 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 like this, cool, cool. Um, so, um, uh, and use the Zoom chat if you, uh, if you if, uh, let's, let's spend a, a minute thinking about what may be interesting for me to explain a little bit more about uh, the thing that I've done here. Um, otherwise, um, I'll just keep going and we can pause again later. So uh, maybe write down the Zoom chat now if you're like, hey, Ed, uh, want to explain what you just did there or that thing earlier? <clears throat> Let's give another 10 seconds before I go. Um, we have someone who wants to just randomly join right now, so I'm going to say no. <laughs> Um, well, I've just seemed to, why does the chat just want to just like randomly go away all the time? I don't understand. No, so I keep hiding it under different, different things. Um, cool. Um, um, okay, I, I'll, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll run the example and then we'll, then we'll talk about it. Thanks for the thoughts. Um, so uh, the, the minus four uh, comes from understanding that uh, I worked out from uh, the different examples that I did uh, on a shorter example of saying, okay, I know that for consecutive groups of five, this is gonna be a group, of, there are three groups and for this length, there are gonna be two groups. And so I saw there was a pattern between the length of the number, the number of groups that, that I needed. That's where the four comes from. Um, uh, so uh, the, the simplest version of it with, uh, with the numbers or the group of numbers, one, two, three, four, five, there's only one group of number uh, and that's the length of five. So, so we can see the example, uh, the pattern between the length of the, the, the original number, the input, and the numbers of groups that I need. Um, and then I experimented with finding the range uh, in, in my terminal, in my in IRB, uh, to see how do I get five consecutive numbers? And then what's the connection between how do I do that um, and the number of groups that I need? And it looks like if I just start at zero um, and then increment it by start the starting one by one, uh, uh, I, will, uh, I will find a pattern there. Um, Um, yes, let's, let's, let's have a look at an example and, and, and then, then let's talk about it. Um, cool. So, um, the, the point that, that we're going towards um, is I want to have in like this example uh, input um, and in my head and, and that means um, if, if you all thought about it, like what are the groups of five because they're the numbers, um, uh, these are the groups of five percent of numbers that we end with. And then the idea is we find the maximum number of that um, and return that number. And uh, the, the work that we're doing at the moment is how do we split up this like, long number into groups of five consecutive numbers. And that's, that, that's the, the, the meaty work that we're trying to do. Uh, and, and the way that I'm going about it is trying to, to, to break it up into small steps and just experiment and demonstrate some tools. Um, so the, um, uh, what I'm actually gonna start writing as code now um, it asks, is essentially this part here, this set of steps. 
um, and um, uh, what I what I want to be able to do uh, is uh, find the number of groups from the length of the digits minus four. So uh, I know that if the length of this input is seven, I'm going to need seven minus four, three groups. There's going to be these three groups, for example. Uh, that's all that can be is consecutive numbers uh, in, a, in a group. Um, so uh, the first thing I can do is, is, is have, have a think about that. Um, and um, uh, that's what Ruby code would look like if I needed to find um, uh, the length of the word minus four. Um, and then uh, this will give you the, the, the number of groups. Let's, let's be descriptive about this, number of groups. So in my example of trying to think about it using a simple one of, of using a, a, a length of seven, uh, this would end up being seven minus four, which is three. So I'd have three groups. And this is the moment so far accurate. Then I need to think about, okay, how do I actually get the, the individual groups of five such numbers? I know at some point I need to be doing something like this, as we were doing in our, in our, in our example of using a range. Um, um, and so if I, if I were to do it manually, I would try and find a way to do it like this, where, where I need uh, 0 through 4, uh, 1 through 5, and then 2 through 6. Um, and that would give me like the three, the three groups. Um, and, uh, and then I would have to like, figure out like, which is the biggest of them, um, and, then, uh, and then return it. Um, so, um, uh, maybe that's like a, a an easy easy place uh, uh, to, to, to think about. Um, how do I like then make make a rule about this? Um, does does this part here make sense uh, about uh, how I would find the three consecutive in order, starting from zero the, on the left, um, uh, uh, from here, getting grabbing this one, and then grabbing this one. And then grabbing the last one, and trying to just find groups of consecutive numbers. I can see a few nods. Um, cool. Um, so, so this is something to, to, to play around with uh, uh, in, your, in your terminal. Um, I'm going to I'm going to move on, uh, and then we'll come back uh, to this. Um, so, uh, uh, from this, I need to think about. Okay, so um, I have three groups, and I'm going to start at zero. I just want to increase by one each time. And, um, and then uh, the relationship between these two is it's always going to be plus four, it looks like. Whatever this is, is going to be uh, this plus four. So one, zero plus four is four, one plus four is five, two plus four is six. So I don't need to actually worry about these numbers um, if I could find a way to, to, to generalize it. So um, where I'm at so far is, is, is just uh, trying to think about like finding the pattern. Um, um, and uh, trying to think about uh, uh, what's going on. Um, so I have a number of groups, um, and um, um, let's see, like an easy way to do this is, or like a simple way to do this uh, would be to, um, let's say, I want to do it, uh, if, for example, we only had two groups, I just want to do it twice. So I'm going to try and uh, do it the same number of times as the number of groups that I want. So if it's three times, I want to do something three times where I grab parts of a word. Um, <clears throat> and um, I'm going to... Um, try and think about how I uh, access, uh, this is like the start and this is the end. So I need to think about what do I put, what do I do to represent these numbers? Um, and um, let's say for example, let's try and be like super simple about this. And I want to say, I want to start uh, at zero. Um, and so I'm gonna, that will start at zero. Um, and, um, uh, then I want to say, well, this is always going to be start plus four. 
you can see the pattern between uh, the examples just below. So uh, if I do that and then I want to um, uh, increase start um, by one. So then when it goes back and does this, it's going to uh, uh, start at one and it will then go to two. And so um, we'll find a way to just be super um, uh, simple about this and just have a counter uh, that will increment. Um, so that's the, that's, the, that's the way I'm thinking. Uh, um, I'm going to say, for example, in the first go round of this, uh, this start's going to be zero, um, which means that the range um, will be zero and goes to, because zero out of four is four. Um, and then we're gonna increment uh, uh, the start counter. So the next time it goes round, it'll start at one, and then we'll go one, and then minus four is five. Because we've already demonstrated that we can get competitive numbers uh, uh, using the range. So the last thing that's missing, or the second last thing that's missing is we've got to store all of these uh, uh, groups. So um, I'm just going to uh, create another, like a storage container as a variable. Um, and uh, I, I just have a list where I can just like keep track of all the things that I'm, I'm, I'm creating and um, uh, uh, put the um, result of um, accessing from, from, from the digits into, into the list. So I'm going to, I'm going, I'm going to actually switch back to IRB and just demonstrate what's actually happening because I think we're, we're probably holding a lot of things in our heads at the moment. And whenever I, I'm holding a lot of things, I like to just like demonstrate. And um, so let's have a look at uh, this example and keep it uh, uh, simple. So I'm going to reshare my screen. Cool. So let's have a let's have a look at this simple example that I was trying to do, um, and and uh, let's let's do the same thing that I was I was writing there. Um, I'm going to create um, uh, a local variable and just have an empty array where I can keep track of things. I can push things into this array, um, and. Uh, the current set, uh, the current like, the number that I'm trying to split it into the group is uh, the number one, two, three, four, five, six, and it's got a length of six, so it means we're going to have two groups. Um, so we know that because we have a formula where we just do minus four, and we can see we're going to have two groups. Uh, so we call this a uh, number of groups. So I'm just using this as a way to like test my ideas and sort of like make sure I'm on the right track. Uh, number of groups. Um, and then I want to go through um, and uh, uh, think about like uh, when I go through and try and build up uh, the numbers, um, I need to start from a start point. So I'm going to say start at zero. Um, and, and then I'm going to go through the, 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 the loop. So I want to do it twice because I, again, I only have, there are only two combinations that I need, one, two, three, four, five, and two, three, four, five, six. So I just do it however number, however number of times I need, which is the number of groups. This has two in it. So it's going to be two times. What I want to do in this, well, I want to be able to just um, uh, put into my combinations um, whatever is in digits from the start, which is starts at zero, to uh, four, uh, four spaces later. So that's, uh, that's the representation of starting at zero, which is uh, starts at zero, plus four, um, and that's the range. And we grab the range and we store it in the combinations. 
Um, and then we need to uh, uh, increase uh, uh, the, the zip from zero to one. Um, and then we finish. So if I now explore what's in combinations, you can see that I've added into this array um, uh, two um, uh, uh, groups of five six numbers that I need. So uh, this is this is the point where um, uh, we need to think about some of the things that I've done um, and um, uh, the the sort of abstraction that I've made uh, is this part here, I think, is how I get the, the right uh, index. And I'm trying to find the right index by understanding the pattern. And I answer the pattern by just going through some manual examples uh, uh, in, in English or in my book that I'll be writing up just to try and see what the pattern is um, and try to understand what, what's, what's happening. Um, and then just taking it as simply as I can, just translating my, my thoughts into, into lines of code. Um, and this, this, this example can be done a, a bunch of different ways. Given that I have uh, an, an array of numbers, I need to look up what's the biggest number. And so I'm actually just going to try and like have a quick research uh, in, in Ruby about how, how to find uh, the biggest number. Um, um, so let's, let's have a look at our browser. Uh, Ruby, uh, uh, find largest number in an array. Uh, let's have a look. Stack Overflow, some of our best. Look at that, top answer has got negative numbers. This question has been asked so many times before. Personally, I think the answer is built in. The max method, look at that, Ruby is so nice. It just gives you these lovely methods. So it gives me an example that says uh, one, three, and five, I call dot max and just gives me by magic the number that I want. So let's, let's actually try and test that out. Um, so I'm gonna go back to my, my terminal uh, to see if I can uh, test it out. So I'm gonna go combinations. Um, and then by magic, it says called dot max. Look at that. And it grabs me, grabs me a number. Cool. So uh, usually by, by just like uh, researching things I don't know how to do, um, I'll have a look at some of the resources. Uh, some of the official uh, uh, documentation is like a usually good bet. Uh, or Stack Overflow it can be hit and miss, but uh, it, it can be pretty useful as well. Uh, that's an understatement. It is really useful. Um, so uh, I think I'm now pretty much all set just to add this into the, the example. Um, and, um, and then we can, then we can chat about it. So let's go back uh, to browser. And um, the main thing uh, uh, that I ask everyone to take away from these sessions is just the process that I'm doing and uh, the steps I'm following and, and, and not worry so much because when you're when I put you into, into groups, you'll be starting off on similar, simpler, simpler problems. And just think about how you interpret the instructions, write them out into English. Uh, think about each individual step. Think about a simple case, the simplest of cases. And, 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 and think about what the input is, what, what you need to uh, do to get to the output. Write those steps down and then start converting it to code. Um, so, um, okay. So, um, it looks like um, the last thing I need to do was do a little bit of magic down here called combinations uh, dot max to get the largest one. Um, and um, I'm going to uh, uh, run uh, the test uh, to see uh, how far I've got in solving this problem. Um, uh, and I run the test by uh, clicking on this button down here and looking at, at the output on the left. Um, and if you have a look on the output on the left, it says, I got the right number, but just not the right type of number. So expected uh, a, a 90912, but it's got the string version. So um, uh, then I would look up uh, how do I get from a, a string to, to an integer? Does anyone have, a, have a, um, uh, an, an idea? Yes, I'll get back to you, Michael, in a second. Yep, 2i, awesome. That's a, that's a great, uh, great method. It just uh, uh, coerces 
uh, the, the string into an integer or whatever it is to an integer. So I will, um, uh, uh, I'm gonna put it into uh, uh, this part here. Um, I'm gonna uh, convert this sort of like the, the, the combination, each, each of them into, into an integer first. And then test it again. Um, and we can see that we pass the test on the left. Cool. So uh, at this point here, I'm gonna stop. Um, uh, there would be an, another phase where I go through where I think about how to clean this up. Like are, are there other ways that I can do about it to make it easier? Um, and, um, but well, the point of this demonstration is not really this solution. Uh, it's just the phases that I went through. Uh, and uh, how do I go from requirements, just step by step, not really worrying about and, um, uh, uh, the, the specifically the way that uh, the, the implementation, but just the process. 